Okay. Hey, everybody. It's Monday. Happy Monday. It's June 24th. We're three days into official summer. Our topic today on chatting with Agnes and Cecilia is the benefit of sharing knowledge. Chatting with Agnes and Cecilia is brought to you by Rogue Tulips Consulting. We focus on helping 501c organizations bloom outside the box. Check us out at roguetulips.com. We're also a proud supporter of the 501c League, which is a virtual membership organization for all members of the 501c community. So we're here. Hey, I'm here with my co-host and friend, Agnes Amos Coleman. Agnes, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Good morning. This is Agnes Amos Coleman. I am an author and a consultant with Rogue Tillip. Over to you, Cecilia. Great. Thanks, Agnes. And I am Cecilia Seth. I'm the CEO and founder of Rogue Tulips, which is a virtual consulting consortium. We are the core consulting team at the company, and we have a curated network of experts in the association community to help organizations with any size project or any kind of project that you might need help with. So check us out online, contact us, and let's talk. But today what we're going to chat about is the benefit of sharing knowledge. So um, Agnes, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Like, first of all, let's talk about what is knowledge? What, in your opinion, is knowledge? I think for me, knowledge simplify, or symbol, symbolizes the ability to empower others. It's that information sharing where you support one another, whether in the business environment or outside of the business environment, to achieve the goal and end result. Um, that's, for me, what knowledge is all about um, and, and what it means to share knowledge um, really is about empowering others. I think that that's really what it's about too. Um, knowledge is not just for oneself, even though as you share it, you benefit as a result, but what you do with that knowledge is that you help empower others. You know, I really love that you brought that up about empowering other people because, you know, one of the things you and I have talked about before is the uh, influence of the self-help book mm -hmm. on U.S society and how we do things uh you know it's a very positive attitude like you could read a book somebody wrote and get help and they're sharing their knowledge and that empowers you to use their information and knowledge to make a change in your life or do something better or learn how to do something i mean that's that's another thing of self-study and self-help books is you can learn how to do something by having somebody else share their knowledge through a book or a webinar or something mm -hmm. like that. And I, I love the thing of empower because we, there's that old saying knowledge is power. And so to have power, you need to know stuff. So it's the uninformed people that seem to feel powerless. I think it's people who don't know that they can do things. They don't know, for example, there's an agency in the government they can call and get help, or they don't know if you can easily find something online, or they don't know that there's a group out there that can answer their questions, or they don't know that uh, there's an association for associations. I mean, they just, people don't know, and then they ask, oh, okay, that's easy. So that's why I tend to be very willing to share information and knowledge with people because it's like I already learned this lesson so mm -hmm. I, I'm happy to tell you what I what I learned um, and to me knowledge is the combination of experience mm -hmm. and information so mm -hmm. you take that information and then you put it into context mm -hmm. of experience and that's knowledge mm -hmm. because you can have data but if you don't know how to use the data it's not really knowledge because knowledge mm -hmm. is that fuel that empowers you mm -hmm. forward you know, you're right. And, and one of the things that knowledge also does, because you, as you said, it's that information, but if you don't use it, if you don't use it to benefit others, whether in 501c that we play in or outside of 501c that we play in, if you don't use it to empower others, then it becomes a useless, useless knowledge. The other part of knowledge that fascinates me or the benefit that I see is that it helps generate ideas. Because even though we're, you know, we're sharing it, we're empowering others, it's a way to stimulate ourselves as well. You and I have had an opportunity just to chat about things. And in, in that chatting process, we're stimulated, you know, we, we're generating ideas on how we can better, um, you know, be better people and as well as, 
you know, be better consultants for other people as well. So that's that side of knowledge that for me, it's also fascinating, the ability to generate idea in the process. Yes, that's a really that's great point because with the ideas, the, the ideas start coming because you're sharing knowledge and you kind of build on something. And, you know, even if you're doing something that you've done a million times before, you can go, wait a minute, I could just do this like use a tool in a different way or use information in a different way. You know, I could do this instead of that. And oh, wow, look, it's working so much better. Um, and I actually just had something like that happen to me recently. And now I can't remember. It was a really good uh, example too. And now I can't remember because I do so many things every day like everybody else. But I do experience that like from talking to you or talking to other people or just kind of thinking things through based on the knowledge I've accrued on my own. I'm like, Oh, I can do this thing in a different way. And it works. You know, there was an author that said a while ago, and I can't remember his name right now. Um, that there are no new ideas. There are just a regeneration of ideas. So things that are done hundred years ago, that we learn about now, we just look at different applications on how to apply it. Mm -hmm. But in itself, it is a new idea because we as individuals in the knowledge sharing process, we're looking at the different applicability of that knowledge and that becomes in turn a new idea. So either way that you look at it, it's, it's, it's a fascinating process of reinvention of ideas and empowering others and also generating new ideas as a result. And rediscovering knowledge. You made good me point. think about that because that's a good point. You and I have talked about that book before and I can't remember the name of the book either. So yeah, guys, it's Monday, okay. <laughs> but uh, but it, the idea itself is a great one. It's like William Shakespeare wrote, there is nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. But when you think about that, he wrote his plays mostly in the 15th, Six, no, 16th century, because it was the 1500s, so the 16th century, and they were already saying there's nothing new under the sun, mm -hmm. yet Europe had just recently come out of the Dark Ages, when you think about it, and rediscovered all this ancient knowledge, like from the Roman Empire and ancient Greece, things like algebra and uh, ideas about how to build plumbing and, and water, you know, deliver water to cities in, in a reasonable way uh, they still use a lot of those ancient aqueducts in rome mm -hmm. which i don't know if people realize that you know you see them if you visit rome and you think oh it's it's this nice piece of ancient architecture but those things are actually still working mm -hmm. um because they were built so well so a lot of that knowledge was lost and then had to be rediscovered and so it's new again and applied in a new way in a different situation like you said in a new era and it's sort of like that idea of you know you you try something and i think a lot of 501c organizations is you try something it doesn't work so you say oh well, it didn't work well that doesn't mean you don't try it again it just means it wasn't going to work at that time mm -hmm. maybe it'll work in the future you know you have to wait for the right situation as well to implement an idea sometimes it's not the right time to implement an idea sometimes you have to wait or you have to implement that idea in a different way it's sort of like <laughs> i and carrying your members with you, because with 501c organizations that we play in, I think some of our members might not necessarily be ready um, for that idea. But if we can carry them along with us and help explain and empower those ideas, they may recognize that their organization is actually ready to embrace it. So we have a role as association executives and consultants to help you know, shape the future of our membership and help them recognize not what necessarily that they want, but what they need for now and for the future of their business. Excellent point. That is excellent because especially bringing the members in, it's sort of like, you know, I guess we still say crowdsourcing, but maybe it's not as popular as it once was. Uh, but yeah, crowdsourcing information or group knowledge, community knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of like, I recently volunteered to be on the ASAE Collaborate 
rules review committee because they review those rules every few years and make sure they're working for everybody. And so they asked everybody as the icebreaker, what does collaborate mean to you? And pretty much everybody, including myself, says a great way to share information or help my colleagues with ideas or suggestions um, and just being part of your tribe or your community. So mm -hmm. knowledge helps you find your tribe. So the benefits of knowledge are it empowers people, it generates new ideas, it helps you be part of a community, it helps move your organization forward, it helps engage your members, it helps engage your staff, I think, too, because I, I think an important thing, and you know, I think some people know Agnes and I used to work together previously before we started consulting together, and uh, we had broken down the barriers between the different areas of responsibility, and we did a lot of cross-training, cross-marketing, so that's another way to benefit your organization with knowledge sharing is break down those barriers. Mm -hmm. Don't have the silos, uh, bring the people together. And, and it's what's best for everybody because if knowledge is hidden, then it can't be used and people start to make things up. That's why data is important because you can't just go around with opinions. Uh, one of the companies we're partnering with now, Gravitate Solutions, uh, which has a great tool called Nucleus for blended data. Uh, they actually do a lot of tweeting. Of, they tw they find really funny or interesting quotes about you know having an opinion versus having data to make a decision <laughs> because it's like if you don't have data, all you have are opinions, and so you might as well just take mine as mm -hmm. kind of their thrust. And and I think that's a great uh, point as well. So it's uh, so in closing, uh, we're I guess we'll close a little early today. We tend to run over, so. We'll take a few minutes back. Um, Agnes, do you have a closing comment on the topic? I mean, my, my take on this is that as, if we're going to be successful consultants and 501c executives, teams, managers, uh, we need to recognize the value that knowledge sharing brings to us as individuals, as an organization. And we need to make this as part of our priority, even part of our strategic planning, uh, to encourage knowledge sharing um, in our various 501c organizations. Um, and as we make that as, as, as a priority, we will see that not only will our community try, our members will thrive, and all our stakeholders will thrive as well. Yeah, and that's great. And and, that, and it's a great motivator, as you just said. So it motiv benefits of knowledge sharing. It motivates people. It engages your members. It engages your staff. Uh, it empowers you. And it helps you find new ideas. So those are the benefits of knowledge sharing. And I think that's, that's why we love being consultants, because we love sharing what we know with our clients or potential clients. Um, or we could do like a variation of a joke. We used to have at association laboratory, you know, everybody's a client. We just haven't invoiced you yet. So. That's right. <laughs> but, but that's why we're here. That's why we love doing chatting with Agnes and Cecilia and just kind of sharing our take on things and uh, sharing our knowledge with you. And it's a benefit to us as well because uh, we always learn something from our conversation. So uh, we're going to wrap it up for this Monday and hope y'all have a great rest of today, rest of the week. And uh, like we always say, take 15 minutes and have a conversation with somebody because you might learn something. Mm. So we're signing off for now. Thank you. Thank you.